Hey VC, this is Brad from H2 Vinyl, and today I'll be doing another contest video. This one is for Beth, also known as B-Side Records. Uh, she just hit 100 subs, I think a few weeks ago. Um, I'm new to her channel. Uh, I just looked a little bit ago, and she's at 153 um, at the recording of this video. Uh, so congratulations, you're almost halfway to, you're over halfway to 200. Way to go, Beth. Um, like I said, I'm new to your channel. I've watched a few of your videos, seen a few of the contest videos. I got to know you, uh, I know of your channel anyway, uh, by Jeff Kempen. Uh, Jeff's a good friend of mine and um, watched his uh, contest entry and really thought it was a pretty cool contest. Um, what I've learned of, of Beth the last few days <clears throat> is she loves horror, she loves Queen, and uh, she loves soundtracks. I also know, um, I think from Vinyl79, uh, said that you live in Missouri, and you call Missouri, mi uh, Misery. <laughs> so, um, I'm, I was born in Iowa, and I call Iowa, Iowa! Yeah, that's kind of cheesy, I was going with the horror theme. Ah, at the end, anyway. Um, so let's get into it, enough gabbing. Um, Queen, uh, the, the first first thing is show the show the things in your collection uh, that have to do with um, her favorite artist, which is Queen, or her favorite band. So <clears throat> the first thing, I actually, the first thing I didn't think of <laughs> uh, is uh, a single, this is probably quite possibly the very first thing that introduced me to Queen back in 80? Yeah, 1980. And um, I, I just bought this recently. This is uh, Another One Bites the Dust, that single uh, with uh, Don't Try Suicide on the other side. And um, this, uh, this song has kind of a history, not necessarily this uh, seven inch single, but um, I, growing up, went to a daycare, because both my parents worked, um, a daycare called Kinder Care. Um, very, fairly popular in the Midwest. Um, and I don't remember why they had records there, but they had a few. They had um, uh, this one, it was kind of a tan label instead of a red label like this. And then they also had, um, uh, Joan Jett, uh, I Love Rock and Roll, and um, somehow, some way, I uh, obtained both of those copies, because uh, I loved both songs, and uh, they were both beat up like crazy, and I think they may have, act I may actually still have them in Iowa, but um, love this song uh, so much, um, and it was my introductory to Queen. Um, let me put this back in here. Next up, I have in my collection with Queen is their second album, which was released in 1974. And this is Queen 2. Um, I don't have a whole lot of Queen. I have a few albums. Um, and I don't necessarily listen to Queen all that much. But I will be probably this week, just because uh, it's um, digging these out and remembering that I have them. Uh, the Game which is actually a promo copy. I think a gold stamp promo? No. No, not gold stamp. But uh, definitely pretty beat up at the bottom there. Um, again, uh, favorite song, another one bites the dust, of course, on that. And then I have uh, their Greatest Hits album, uh, which uh, was released in 90, er, 81. Um, and so I've got that, and then I also have uh, this album, uh, which is uh, Queens of the... Wait, how did that get in there? Jeez, um, <laughs> Queens of the Stone Age is one of my favorite groups. <laughs> anyway, um, and then the last thing I have is jazz. Um, I, I want to say, I'm trying to think, I, I've seen a few, like I said, of these contest videos, and I, I think Andy showed the game and also Jazz uh, by Queen. And um, there was a song that I knew on here that I didn't know was Queen. And that was, what was the name of it? 
Can't stop me now. I think that that's what that's what it was. Can't stop me now. Um, having such a good time. I'm having a ball. Yeah, that one. Um, no more singing, I promise. Moving on to soundtracks, which is her second question. So what soundtracks do you have in your collection? Oh, man. I enjoy collecting soundtracks. Um, I don't have a crazy amount in my collection, but I do have probably 30 or 40. I did not pull all of them, um, but uh, here are some of them I do have. Uh, so uh, I enjoy some Marvel movies. Uh, Marvel movies are kind of wearing on me. They, re what, they release a couple a year, it seems like, and it's a little too much. But back in the day, uh, when Guardians of the Galaxy came out, um, really still into it, and this soundtrack is awesome. Uh, a lot of great classic hits on here. Gosh, there's so many. I can't even... Man, just look up the track listing. It's great. And then they also have the original score on this as well. Put that down. Another one that is horror-related, at least to me anyway. It's also comedy-related. Ghostbusters, the original, the original um, soundtrack. Um, there was one part of Ghostbusters that really, really scared me, and that maybe two. But the first thing that really, really scared me was uh, the librarian um, when she. I just, re I just remember being in the theater, and I'm like, oh my gosh, just get away from that aberration and then when she turned into that scary monster ghost thing I was like I'm done I'm done thankfully I wasn't the rest of the movie was hilarious um so that that's a classic soundtrack here is another uh for me horror related because um as great as this was there were parts of it that I had to fast forward through Netflix and that is Stranger Things for the first season anyway the second season I didn't really do that but um, when uh, Eleven I, I don't want to give anything away if you haven't seen Stranger Things but who hasn't seen Stranger Things um, when Eleven was in the dark place you know, uh, where she was alone that kind of void and she saw the Demogorgon um, walking up to the Demogorgon uh, was was just one of those things where I'm like, and I, I I need I need to watch this at a faster pace. They're moving way too slow, and and I don't want to I don't want to tackle this. So um, again, kind of horror related, but I love the '80s soundtrack. The theme song is phenomenal. Anyway, the the synth type sound that this is um, the score is incredible. I am also an anime fan, and I've showed this one um, a few months ago um, on my channel. And this is one of my favorite anime, Akira. Um, Akira could also be kind of horror, cyberpunk related as well. Uh, it's about a kid who gains superpowers and is not able to control them, and loses control of them, and it's up to his friends to stop him. Um, great, great classic movie, uh, and this is a very classic soundtrack. This was released, uh, uh, this is a re-release in 2017 um, uh, by, I believe, MPO. It was a French release, so um, a, a French pressing anyway, and I think MPO did that. So, uh, really, really great pressing plan. <clears throat> soundtrack still going on here and this uh, goes into video games I enjoy or at least I used to enjoy video games and so I have some of the classic uh, video game soundtracks one of them being Halo 2 I love Halo um, the first game I've played through so many times I can't even count and Halo 2 while it was a big difference in story it brought about a lot of lore and a lot of um, uh, the story that just wasn't available in the first game. Um, kind of inner story of the conflict there and the ambient and the chorus and the, the orchestra of the Halo soundtrack um, is iconic. Um, 
Martin is it Martin O'Dowell. Yeah, Martin O'Donnell um, did a, a fantastic job of creating the sound of Halo. And um, if you, even if you haven't played the Halo game, you've probably heard the Halo soundtrack some way, some somehow. And the last soundtrack, I'm big into chip tunes. And um, this is uh, one of my favorite chip tunes, and this is uh, Simon's Quest, Cancel Castlevania II. And uh, this is on two, no, sorry, one ten inch, which means there isn't a whole lot of music. And there was a, another release of this, this is on a splattered blue with yellow vinyl. Um, there's another release of this where half of it was a midnight blue and the other half was kind of a off-white, um, which looked incredible, but that was very limited. So I'm really glad to have this. One side is the original U.S. Nintendo version, and then the second side is the Japanese special chip that was in the Japanese game. And it's, it's I, I feel like I say amazing a lot. Um, it's... I also feel like I say incredible a lot. Um, it's unique on how different the sound of the Nintendo uh, was um, between uh, the U.S. and 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 the Japanese counterpart, uh, the Super, the Famicom. And um, a lot of soundtracks are released on. Mondo and Mondo does a great job with all of their packaging. Um, they have the kind of OB strip um, on their packaging. I, I have this in, in the plastic wrap, so uh, I, I'm not able to show that um, OB strip. But uh, I know you're very familiar with Mondo and uh, they do a great, like I said, great job of putting out great, amazing soundtracks. Those are the oh, they're like five, you know, probably closer to eight soundtracks that uh, I really enjoy and I have in my collection. And now, anything related to horror in my collection. Besides the soundtracks of, of Ghostbusters and, and Stranger Things, I don't have a lot of horror in my um, collection. Uh, right now, I'm listening to... Uh, Stephen King books. Um, uh, Jeff Kempen has kind of uh, spurred me on and, and has encouraged me to listen to this or read this and this and this. But as I'm listening to them uh, I, through audible.com, um, I'm really not able to show anything. Um, but I've, I've listened to all of the Dark Tower series. Um, just finished It uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And I've listened to The Stand as well. Um, yeah, really, uh, I think The Stand wasn't as, um, I guess it wasn't as epic for me. Um, uh, but I, it was, and, and uh, Dark Tower um, was also phenomenal. The ending upset me, but I won't get into that. But what I do have in my collection... Uh, are video games, and um, quite possibly one of the scariest games I have ever played was Resident Evil on the PlayStation. Yeah, get that out. This is the director's cut. Um, back in, I think this was released in 95 or 96. Um, I had the original. Um, and I think the sound effects have changed on the, the director's cut. It's been a while since I've um, uh, played this game. But um, I, played, I couldn't play this game alone. I had to play uh, this game with a friend. Um, and so he would, you know, come, he would come over and I'd play, we'd play this game until like 2, 3 o'clock at night. And <laughs> we, got, we got so far into the game, um, and I remember one night we got, we just were lost. And we were lost, and we, we, we knew we were lost. We knew we were just repeatedly going to rooms because there, were, there was nothing new in them. 
there was no zombies. And, and then all of a sudden we found a zombie and we're like, oh, here's where we're supposed to go. So we kept on going that way. And the game was basically backtracking us to um, the original part that we, we started out with. And as we did that, um, we were uh, stalked by something in the game. And this thing was a gorilla type lizard thing. They're called hunters. And we weren't expecting it. I was I was playing the game. My friend Tim didn't want to touch it. And <laughs> and I did my best to tackle the monster, you know, just kill the monster and with one chop gone my head. My character's head was gone and my friend Tim turned to me and he's like it was about four o'clock in the morning and he goes, um, when was the last time we saved? And we hadn't saved for the eight hours of gameplay. And, um, yeah, I said, uh, we haven't saved tonight. And he goes, yeah, I think I'm going to go home. And so that next day with about three hours of sleep, um, <laughs> I played through that game to get back to that portion. I did not play that portion by myself, though. I waited for Tim to get there that night. But anyway, um, yeah, I remember having nightmares of that game. Um, just zombies. And now, I mean, I look at it and it's kind of funny. Um, there are, it isn't that scary of a game. But I, that, does, that hasn't stopped me from collecting the others. Yeah, so... I have Resident Evil 2. I think I have it on computer. I don't know where it is. Um, but then I have, for the PlayStation 2, uh, Code Veronica. And then I also have um, Resident Evil 5. I thought I had Resident Evil 4, which was for the GameCube, but I don't. And then, but what I do have for the GameCube is quite possibly the scariest game I own. And that is the remake of the original for the GameCube, Resident Evil. And um, they changed this game up enough that there are there is horrific things that happen. And there was at a point where I couldn't play this game anymore. And I had to have a friend stand in for me because there is a character in here that hunts you. It hunts you down and you can't kill it. You can only stop it <laughs> by shooting and temper and but then she gets back up. Her name is Lisa. That's weird. My, that's my sister's name. Um, that's even creepier. <laughs> anyway, um, the first game, scary. This game takes it to a whole new level. And so those are the four or five, four items uh, in video game that uh, I have that are uh, they're up there in scariness. So I've played all of the Resident Evils. Um, I think I kind of I dropped off with six, uh, and I watched someone play seven uh, on YouTube. I don't do much gaming anymore. I mainly just watch Let's Plays on YouTube, and man, seven, whoo, buddy, seven is terrifying. Um, again, that that uh, kind of like uh, Lisa character. There's a whole bunch of monsters, I guess. Yeah, uh, characters that you can't kill, and they they stalk you, they hunt you. And you don't know when they're going to show up. So anyway. <clears throat> Beth, that is my entry to your contest. I hope, um, I hope it met all the requirements. I think it did. And uh, congratulations on hitting the 100 subs. I hope uh, you're enjoying all of these contest videos that are coming in. Um, it's definitely growing your channel. Way to go. Uh, just in the few months that you started this contest, I know you've grown um, almost 50 uh, over 50 subscribers. So congratulations on that as well. You've got a great channel. I'm looking to get into more of that channel, your channel, um, uh, and learn more and more about you. So hope you're doing well. Hope everyone's doing well, listening to great vinyl, some great soundtracks, watching some great horror as well. And uh, we will talk to you next time.